dear all we are, we cordially welcome you for this uh, august occasion so we are just uh, we'll be starting the even another couple of minutes we are just waiting for uh, mr vishu mahajan sir to join the meeting so we'll be starting the meeting another couple of minutes joshua i am already okay. there I'm already there i was there long back my name might oh. be different so i'm i've joined oh. from the phone just a minute i'm there okay okay thank you sir so thank you for joining so on this occasion i welcome mr d ravi of sik uh, msme expert committee and md of uh, classic molds to start the session with an inaugural address and set the context for this uh, meeting thank you joshua uh, good morning to all uh, it's indeed my <laughs> pleasure uh, to um, do the welcome address for this financial clinic being jointly sponsored by sikki with uh, MT, that is the MSM Trade and Investment Promotion Bureau, jointly. I also like to appreciate and thank the partners associations like MT, TA, TIC, Osur Industrial Association, ISTMA, and uh, Indian Chamber of Commerce. So, the MSMEs are the uh, backbone of this country, and uh, they are the silent warriors. and mostly msmes are started with a lot of technocrats or entrepreneurs who are experts in their own domain of, of the field or when the business which they are good at but they do lack their financial guidance or knowledge to be honest many msmes or entrepreneurs of the micro and medium and small industries may not even know don't know how to do read the balance sheets properly they blindly they go by the auditor's recommendation being in this situation they struggle a lot to get some financial loans assistance from the financial institutions by giving some collaterals with their odd end properties whatever little they have and once they get the loan they start busy producing out of that equipments with which they start making sales and trying to see profit but many of them not able to understand like the famous say saying in the electricity department energy saved is energy produced for msmes interest saved is the profit earned but many are not aware of it maybe they may end up buying the or borrowing loans at a higher rate of interest uh, and they will be struggling to pay their loans with a higher interest rates and thereby draining most of their hard earned profits in the way of interest payments to the loans normally in the court of law they say no uh, ignorance is not a excuse same way i would say for msmes ignorance is a huge loss so particularly in this today's context of covid for the last one year where the industries all industries or every person suffered a lot but industries particularly msme suffered a great in the last 6 months and now industries are reviving back with a good orders at least many of them and the order market position is good unfortunately when the businesses and the industries are reviving now created a huge demand there's a huge scarcity and cost of the raw material has gone up so high on the one side the industries are coming out of the covid and trying to revive and uh, make up the uh, compensate the losses which they suffered in the last 8 to 9 months now the spiraling raw material cost is making it absolutely unviable for many industries to run so these are these are the kind of uh, situations the msme is facing currently and uh, i would say Uh, in this current situation, what we need is a kind of a financial ICU. That is what is the most of the MSMEs are uh, facing. But we really appreciate the Sikki and uh, MT has come out with uh, financial clinic to guide and uh, help the industries about the various kind of financial schemes available. And I also like to welcome and recognize uh, Mr. Vishnu Mahajan, IAS Managing Director of MT. Welcome you, sir. Mr. Sindil Murugan, Senior Manager, National Stock Exchange of India. 
and Mrs. Kadambari, Branch Manager, Vellu Tamil Nadu Industrial Investment Corporation, Mr. Srikant Gopalan, Promoter SMB Enabler Private Limited, Mr. Shanmuga, Zonal Lead, Product Excellence, Tally Solutions. So these are all the persons we are going to talk and share their uh, knowledge for the benefit of MSMEs. And I'm sure by end of this meeting, MSMEs will be definitely have some valuable takeaway, which should help them um, do better or avail the various schemes available to run the business effectively. With this brief note, I welcome you all one and all and let us do it. Thank you. Thank you, sir. It was a beautiful uh, opening for this event. So now we welcome Mr. Uh, Vishwamahajan IAS. So Vishwamahajan IAS is currently the additional commissioner of uh, TIC, uh, IC and DIC. And he is also the managing director of uh, MTEC, which is MSME Trade Investment Promotion Bureau of uh, Tamil Nadu. So prior to his current role, he has functioned as a sub collector and he has also worked as assistant secretary, Ministry of Development of uh, Northeastern Region, Government of India. So he is a BTEC graduate from IIT Bombay. So, sir, we welcome you for this uh, August occasion and we would like to deliver your uh, request to del deliver your address, sir. So, thank you, everyone, and uh, I would like to, I hope I'm audible. So, uh, I would like to welcome yes, all uh, participants and speakers from various organizations, including SIKI, uh, NSC, uh, TALI, uh, TIC and uh, idfc so uh, welcome to everyone and uh, uh, since i have taken charge here as uh, in the msme department what we have been constantly hearing uh, is that one of the major issues in the msme department in the msme sector is the uh, problem of access to affordable and easy credit so the finance has always been an issue and that is something that came up in all our discussions with all associations and with various departments. So while there are various schemes run by the uh, department, the MSME department, there is a, special, a specialized organization for providing easy access to finance both at the state level, which is the TIIC and at the uh, uh, central level, which is SIDB, but still a lot of issues while accessing credit and uh, while availing loans are faced by MSMEs and uh, that is one of the constant problems that has been highlighted. So we wanted to uh, do something uh, on these lines and help uh, the MSME industries understand uh, what are the various opportunities available and how they can uh, access them. So in that line, uh, we've tried to bring together uh, with Siki various organizations who can uh, help in this aspect uh, and discuss on the different aspects of uh, financial and credit access. So, uh, for example, uh, we are already having an MOU with the uh, NSC uh, regarding their regarding promotion of their Emerge platform, which is a specialized into uh, providing equity finance to MSMEs. So the Emerge platform, they provide relaxed, uh, you know, uh, uh, procedures for uh, uh, onboarding MSMEs on the uh, stock exchange. So these are alternative models which have emerged in the recent past and uh, various other uh, uh, kind of uh, credit mechanism have now started emerging to address this problem of uh, working capital finance. So um, in that uh, spirit, we've tried to bring together various uh, organizations to speak about the, um, the facilities that they're offering, the products that they are offering and the opportunities that they have for MSMEs to avail uh, access to credit. So I hope uh, these sessions are useful. This is the first of uh, these sessions and we'll, uh, based on the feedback, we'll try to uh, modify and take it up with the next set of districts as well. 
again thank you uh, to sikki for taking the uh, initiative to uh, combine and uh, bring everyone together uh, like i said uh, we are already doing various efforts so in this in this conference we've tried to bring together everyone on the same platform so that it is a more focused and a more useful session so i hope it will be useful for everyone thank you very much so now we welcome mr sandil morgan from nse to talk on all alternate funding schemes for msmes so mr sandil morgan is senior manager for national stock exchange of india limited sir we welcome you so kindly take forward sir thank you mr joshua and uh, first of all i would like to uh, thank uh, uh, mr rajesh bagaji ji and uh, mr rakesh from uh, for giving us this opportunity and uh, so hope i'm happy you hello yes sir we can hear you sir please go on thank you thank you so much and uh, and mr uh, thank you mr ravi uh, was given a nice uh, no, uh, introduction that we had uh, already earlier work uh, with the uh, ambedkar industry state long back i hope you remember that too and uh, i welcome all the dignitaries in the forum and uh, hope you all uh, know about um, nsc is in the known for you know uh, like a uh, you know uh, 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 big exchange in india and we we continue with almost you know 95% of the market share in um, capital market uh, in india and so uh, uh, your voice is not this is vishu air your voice is breaking a bit so acha okay okay i'll try to hold my mic for you to be sir i'll see you. is it okay now yes it's okay but it's not very clear i think there's some uh, problem with your connectivity or uh, might be probably with the headphone okay. or maybe uh, what you can do is you can uh, switch off the video and do just the audio so that the bandwidth is so I'll, i'll i'll try that i'll is it better now yes sir please go on Okay, so uh, so so as I, as I was uh, talking earlier, uh, you know, uh, NSE is known for our uh, major uh, platform like holistic platform of our NSE main board, which is you know where all the big uh, companies like SBS of the world or PCS of the world have been like uh, listed and uh, been like you know investors have been invested and they get the benefit of that same. And uh, <coughs> most of the people are not aware that NSE has a uh, I know uh, same uh, kind of platform for SMEs uh, to list and you know raise funds uh, for their working uh, capital and all other needs actually. So, um, so typically this platform is introduced to market uh, as uh, Mr. Ravi has rightly said. Uh, interest saved is uh, increasing your profit. So, like in the most of the SMEs are you know. uh after uh, the level he started with the investor capital with the friend first level of sourcing fund would be the friends and family next level they go with the banks and uh, and they keep moving uh, forward uh, the funding is a major uh, issue for them to explore uh, to the <coughs> in the market actually so they are trying with a lot of private equity model and a uh, lot of mixture of uh, you know options available in the market to make that simplify and you can have a broader market to them NSE has come up with the platform called NSE Emerge in 2012. See, it is being like regulated by SEBI as like the other uh, you know, uh, platform of NSE, and uh, it's kind of a separate segment of NSE only for SMEs to just list and raise funds. And uh, just to give you a brief uh, picture about how uh, where NSE Emerge platform stands as of now. We have close around uh, 214 companies listed in uh, NSE platform, and the uh, market cap is you know more than 50,000 crores, and uh, around 2,250 crores being priced as a fund from SMEs, and average issue size for in uh, small companies who are listed and raised funds, you know, the average fund raise in the platform is 15 crore, and there are about 20 plus uh, different sectors of markets have been listed here. And already there are close around uh, 60 companies have migrated to main board. So I'll explain how you know the companies can migrate to main board and other other things. And before that, uh, I'll just tell you that which 
how the companies are actually fitting this uh, listing in NSAMS platform. See, as I mentioned earlier, this platform is not for uh, startups. Uh, the company, any com any company who's just coming up, you know, with startups, you know, they uh, will not be you know, uh, getting uh, getting eligible to this uh, platform wherein we have certain criteria to uh, list in. This qualify in the thing. So typically, as I mentioned earlier, the smaller companies, startup companies, they might uh, come with their own capital as well, or as well as they will go for the bank and other things. And the companies who are in the growing stage, like you know, uh, the next level of uh, you know uh, companies who does uh, close around uh, having three to five years of uh, existence in the market, they can actually and we have certain criteria in the uh, network as well as the. Uh, uh, our transaction, uh, our data turnover also, but there, there is, there are not kind of no network, uh, network for this uh, network for uh, no getting into eligible. But we should have a past two network cash approvals and as well as you no know, some kind of you know uh, figures we are expecting in terms of you know profitability. Or any of the I explain in the current slides. So the companies who can list it, of course, in the going stage, who looking for kind of you know, VC level and you know uh, just before the main goal level. They are typically a uh, uh, eligible companies for this. So, as for the regulators' eligibility criteria, we are saying that any company, there are simple three simple norms. One is the company should have three years of operational history, and the company out of three years, two years should be profitable, and they should have a positive network. And fourth point would be their paid up capital should be less than 10 crore. That's a uh, minimum uh, category of any SME to get in, get tested on price funds in the market. Uh, simply just to clarify that, uh, if anybody, any company's net, uh, paid up capital is more than 10 crore, but, but le within 25 crore, they can list an SME as well as main board also. If any company's network, sorry, paid up capital is more than 25 crore, they should go to main board only. Main board, which I mean for a bigger, bigger platform where that bigger companies like Wipro, TCS, Reliance are listed actually. If any companies paid up less than 10 crore, they should list an NSE emerge platform. This is the very minimal and base criteria of any company to get list themselves and rise funds in the SME platform. So, and the regulatory framework wise, see, uh, NSE and SEBI, uh, we have reduced a lot of uh, regulatory items and compliance wise uh, for, a, for a, any company to get listed because. If you approach any company, the mindset of any of the small companies and many companies to list is like, you know, listing is kind of, you know, uh, getting into a more into compliance part and you know, it's kind of, you know, uh, as we have to work separated to uh, meet the compliance part of a change. That is not actual uh, picture of uh, MS platform. So typically, uh, any any company, which a private limited company, you also, you I started following the ROC compliance part. That, that is actually enough to be in a listed phase of uh, MH platform. So here, if you see the compare, compare between the main board and the SME board, main, when you come for a listing, in the main board, if you have a minimum 1,000 uh, allotment, allot should be there actually. Many 1,000 units should be listed to your company. But here, you will have just like 50 allotments you can list yourself. And and you have to file a DRSP with SEBI and get approval. In SME platform, you can just file with uh, file your DRSP with this exchange level, it, it, it get clear, uh, clear itself. And uh, you should dilute a minimum 25% of your stakes actually. And uh, there is no grading requirement. There is no ratings required uh, for any company to list in a, in a CMS platform. And we have one more major support uh, which regulator has been given is 100% under, underwriting has been given. Wherein, uh, if you are listing, that we are machine maker or investment maker who takes you know, forward your uh, listing, wherein we will give 100% underwritten, which means that if other investors are coming at the time of IPO or not, that merchant marker will make sure that your ratio is going subscribed 100 percent. That's the kind of a you know, setup this NS emerge uh, platform we call it actually. And uh, we have a market maker for uh, any all the issues wherein the moment you company you company listed, there will be a market maker appointed at the time of listing itself. We will make sure that the stocks is getting liquidity for at least next three years actually. They will be giving a uh, both side uh, liquidity for uh, at least 70 to 70 percent of the market timing. For next three years from the listing, actually, these are the uh, you know additional uh, and major advantage being regulators regulators been given for SME MS platform and post listing also the compliance. If you see main board, 
uh, every quarter you have to give the results to the public. Uh, you have to publish here. You have to just give uh, offer the results. So typically, we do audit on a yearly once minimum. Actually, you have to do just once again in the offerly basis, and that will you not to publish in any of the newspaper. Just need to, I know, uh, keep it in a website and give it to NS. That's it. Otherwise, nothing else to be done. Actually, and corporate norms as per as per the uh, I know ROC uh, compliance. That's it actually. And we, uh, also, we have given one more. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, we even advantage like you. Know, the moment you listed an SL platform after two years, you can migrate to main board uh, without meeting any main board requirements. Actually, that's one of the greatest uh, feature has been given here. Wherein, if you want to be any company, you want to be listed in main board, you should have a minimum of you know rising uh, 200 to 300 crores, and uh, even even the cost goes around a minimum of three to five crores uh, for main board listing. But uh, here, if you are there for two years in uh, SME. Uh, board, you can migrate. Uh, it's kind of a you know, backdoor entry to main board. That's kind of a you know, major advantage. And for any investors, per se, if you see, we are allowing only informed investors into the SME platform. Where minimum investment of uh, in SME companies is one lakh rupee. That's the only major thing uh, we have got it here. And uh, you see the basic process level also. Like uh, you know, just need to. Uh, uh, would appoint intermediaries like uh, merchant bankers and give uh, your uh, uh, RTAs to just work your uh, prepare your uh, forms for uh, listing and uh, if I just file an offer document with the exchange. Exchange give you, exchange will do a due diligence uh, to list your company and see your uh, process and everything. Will give a in principle approval. So the listing goes on. This is what a simple step uh, being uh, processed here, and it all these things will happen uh, within. Um, you know, uh, three to five months of time. Right? We have a company uh, uh, listed in within 45 days also, and we have a company listed in six months also. The average time of any company to get listed in the platform would be uh, three to four months. That's the average timeline that it takes actually. And uh, it's a kind of, as I mentioned earlier, it's a kind of effective uh, way of rising fund. But in, uh, as, I say, as we said, I discussed earlier, if you were uh, Keep on getting debt. Uh, you have to you have to have a you know uh, compulsory. You have to service to the debt whether you are performing or not. That's a kind of a you know, core uh, I know underlying we have to mention actually here. So here by raising funds through equity cap of your equity, you are getting a much more uh, you know uh, fund flow into the system without any cost adding to it. That's what a major advantage of here actually. So that's what we are saying that as a effective way of fundraising. Uh, so this is a value promotion for. Uh, any corporate to raise funds here. So that's as I was just mentioned, like you know, efficient rising, efficient rising capital here. So like you know, whatever the fund you're raising, it's 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 kind of more of an equity, and you know, there is no compulsion to uh, give uh, kind of you know uh, uh, static return to any of your investors. That's what uh, even the entire stock market runs actually. It's based on your performance. The market automatically picks up to the stake to the next level. You you start issuing dividends. The way the market capitalization goes high, your stock value goes high. That's where the investors getting benefited actually. So, as a promoter, as a, as a corporate, you don't want to have a compulsion to have a static return to any of your investors. That's where the it, it, the, it, the fund comes in an efficient manner here, and the visibility goes high. So, the, whatever, see, for example, like what we are saying is, uh, for example, you're doing, uh, you're doing, you're making a five crore profit this year, and next year. Uh, your profit is 66 crore. So it's just a 20 percent change in your books. That's it actually. You're not adding any kind of value to your uh, growth or kind of you know, much more value to your company. The moment you're listing, listed, your visibility goes high. So whether investors are investing or not, they started looking at your company. All the across uh, two lakh plus terminals of NSC, across all the financial magazines, your your company names goes in actually. So wherein the visibility goes high. Even in, so for example, you're working with the kind of you know, any of uh, foreigners, like you know, any of getting any order for input exports and other things. The moment you approach any of the foreign nations, you know, the, they, they see your name as a listed company, they get the more credibility on you. Actually. So that's where higher visibility goes on. It's where you get more credibility. Because even the, the way, as I mentioned, if you're showing 20% profit this year, it's a kind of a news to the market, actually. People started looking into it. So we started performing in a one year, two year, three year down the line. So we get a lot of visibility in the market. People start pouring, you know, investing in, in our company. That's why the market cap is going on, going high, and appropriate valuation. That's that. What you know, a major, uh, you know, chunk we are missing. Uh, that's what I, we see. I've been working with the 
thousands of uh, SMEs across uh, South uh, the last three four years. So our valuation wise, if you see the moment you listed the our, our market cap is our valuation. That's what we all see actually. We all know about the history of Reliance, Wipro, TCS, Infosys, everyone actually. The, the, before they at the time of their listing, they were having say about two crore, five crore, ten crore market cap. You all know that where they are standing for actually. So the market capitalization goes high only if you take the listing part actually. And we have a good corporate governance in place wherein the moment listed, we have professionals into our board. It, it gives us because as soon as uh, unlisted, unlisted, we are all mostly one on management business actually. We are running our business as per our own additions and our own thing. The moment we listed, it's a corporate governance into the system. We follow, we have a professionals into the system actually. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, we can migrate into the main board within two years. That's all like no value provision we are giving it. And easy liquidity will be there because the, 20, uh, the moment the market valuation goes high, uh, for example, we are listing for 100 rupees per share uh, now. After three years or five years down the line, uh, uh, shares based on, a, based on a performance, it goes, for example, 500 or 600 rupees per share. That is not for just 20% to be diluted. It's also for the 70% we are holding it, actually. So whenever you want to liquidate 5% further, 2% further, we can take, take the dilute in the market, we can take the money back. It's an easy way of liquidating it. And any kind of you know, merger and acquisition cases, and any kind of, you know, they're all very simple, easy. Instead of giving money, we can share and exchange uh, our shares with the trades and you can get the deal actually. And the moment you listed your debt rate, you know, when your interest rate get much more, uh, you know, uh, stronger actually. You get much more benefit, uh, you can negotiate with the bank uh, very easily and you get much more, uh, you know, credibility for the banking and also. And the good, we can resource, we can have, we can, uh, you know, retain a good uh, talents actually. The home, caliber employees, you can retain the needs of everything. And and major thing is that, uh, the moment you registered, your shares become collateral. With all the private sector companies, you've seen, you've seen that our shares are just lying in the, uh, the boards and we're not our demand account, we're not utilizing that actually. The moment you listed, our shares become collateral and you can keep that as a collateral, you can get loan, actual loan from the banks actually. So these are the major, you know, like uh, benefits which we keep, we keep giving to the, the carpets are getting from by the way we're showing. Intermediates like, you know, uh, IPOs, uh, the consultation services that are uh, budget bankers and industry bankers they are getting into it and uh, corporate given services being given by the exchange guidelines and SEBI guidelines should be given so that's that's kind of you know intermediary spot so that's where uh, this is the crux of the you know benefits of any in any uh, carpet which we would get it uh, when we look for a listing in SME thing actually so uh, NSC if you see typically we do uh, already tie up with like as, as I mentioned, uh, sir was mentioned uh, was earlier. We have recently this year we have signed MOU with uh, MT and we're doing across resources across places to give more awareness uh, among people. Because as I mentioned earlier, uh, 2012 we have started uh, till uh, as almost you know uh, 51 through 2013. Still last seven years I've seen only we have seen only 2000 and 2700 plus companies in federal NSE. The major reason is uh, from 2013 to 16, I would say. There are about only 11 companies listed across India. The two major reasons is uh, there was no awareness uh, among the people. They were saying that listing is not for us, only for the bigger companies. We are just no a small level of doing and compliance issue. All those things where they do not hear awareness among people. We started taking a lot of initiatives like you know, like we signed MOU with the uh, you know, MT as well as uh, we signed with all the most of the state governments like the state government Uttar Maharashtra, Rajasthan, West Bengal, Hyderabad. Uh, Karnataka, all the people, and we've been giving a lot of approaches across the And we have professional bodies like ICA, ICSI, and even associations like CIA, uh, no, FAU, CT, like a lot of associations. We've been doing a lot of programs like that. And uh, so we started creating awareness among people, like giving more uh, visibility towards the platform. And second, second major reason was uh, not people getting into that the first uh, three, four years was, frankly speaking, the books were not clear. Because openly speaking, uh, most of the, our books or like you know, more of a taxation model, not on the valuation model, wealth creation model. So we, we have guided them you know, how to create your books actually to, uh, to get more valuation. So that's what we keep doing it now. Uh, that's what we're getting delay. We are now the last three years we've seen like, you know, uh, every year we're getting disabled to close to around 70 to 60 carpets that are getting listed in the uh, platform. You now, uh, because we are, uh, we, are actually, we are not actually just no, uh, push, pushing people to list it on the day first actually. Even we are meeting people, we are guiding them how to prepare yourself 
even if it's not if not now for next two years three years five years down the line if you want the listing and take it forward how you can prepare yourself that's what uh, the kind of you know, support we are giving them actually and uh, and uh, the, so we we've actually launched a uh, sme index also in uh, so if you are uh, following market if you have no good index and everything so that's uh, 2017 uh, we launched sme index it has gone up to i know 1900 with the base point of 1000 but 1900 within one year it got up to 90 percent growth because of covid and everything it has come down now it is around 1700 range so within two years two, two years it has gone up to 70 percent growth actually of the sme index so that's how uh you know uh, about the uh, sme platform so i will be very happy to uh you know uh guide you even support you in terms of you know um prepare yourself for into the sme platform to get listed and benefit out of this and i'll be uh, you know even uh, jo, i will be sharing my contact and joshua can share the contact with her forum and anyone who's interested you know i by personal i can you know uh, help you uh, happy to support you all actually thank you joshua so thank you sir that was very much informative and now we welcome mrs uh, kadampari so mrs kadampari is a branch manager of uh, vellore uh, tech uh, tech plants she has completed a master degree in commerce and uh, she has more than 10 years of strong professional experience in finance she is armor in background a strong uh, candor attitude chartered accountant and uh, make her dreams come true so she is also responsible for end to end functioning of this uh, tech plants at vellore offices office and she stay she take care take care of uh, loans and other sanctions disbursement marketing building a uh, with community to attract business is a prime uh, core of uh, area in which she is uh, governing the uh, branch so we welcome us uh, kadampuri to deliver our address welcome ma'am thank you joshua sir is it audible yes ma'am it's actually it's feeble can you please uh, increase your volume Yes, sir. Uh, good morning to all, and welcome everyone to this session. Uh, Tamil Nadu Industrial Investment Corporation Limited, established in 1949, is the first state financial corporation in India. It has been extending financial assistance to micro, small, medium enterprises and large enterprises for setting up new industrial units as well as for expansion, modernization, and diversification. It focuses on extension of uh, assistance to mainly micro, small, and medium enterprises, which accounts for 90% of our total assistance. And also 40% of total assistance is availed by first generation entrepreneurs. Our corporation has continuously earned profit for past 16 years. And so far, we have assisted one lakh. Madam, sorry, can you please be louder? Yes, sir, sorry. Yeah. Uh, our corporation our corporation has continuously earned profit for past 16 years and so far we have assisted 1,23,995 units with a cumulative sanction of 17,000 crores up to 15,11,19 and from this we have extended financial assistance to needs candidates for around 619 units for uh, 300 crores as on 15,11,19. And we, our major industries so far we are funding includes food processing, paper and paper products, textiles, chemicals and chemical products, leather and leather goods, engineering and uh, <coughs> transport loads and other miscellaneous units. <coughs> Why TIC and what are the benefits from TIC we are providing? First is we are providing a competitive interest rates which ranges from 5.95 to 7.95 to micro and small industries and 8.95 to 10.2 percent for medium industries. And the repayment period we are providing is from six years to nine years with two years holiday period. And we are charging uh, interest under reducing balance method only. That is what is the outstanding UR principle that, that for that component only we are uh, charging interest rates. And we, you have the option for pre-closure premium and there is no charges for that. And uh, subsidy you can avail under one roof. These are the benefits you can get from TIC. And our shareholding pattern. 
which includes 72% from government of Tamil Nadu and 12% from SIPCOT and 12% from TITCO and balance from others. And what are the assistance we are providing? First is term loan. This is the major scheme we are giving. From This is for new project or to expand, modernize or diversify the existing project for purchase of land, construction of building and purchase of machinery or equipments, electricals, etc. And next is working capital term loan. <coughs> this is to extend financial assistance for... <coughs> assistance for assisted and non-assisted units sir, Joshua, sir, that is a third slide sir. sorry okay a third ah yes sir working capital term loan that is to extend financial assistance for our assisted as well as non-assisted units for manufacturing as well as process industries to build up their stocks or working capital requirements apart from this we are providing a special scheme of our bill finance scheme that is for msme and man non-manufacturing enterprises who is having a purchase order or work orders from eb twad tangentco and tantransco and pnpl and our products include that is our schemes uh, it's general general term loan tulir flexi fast track micro and small enterprises needs privilege and and bill finance and let me explain uh, one one our schemes first is a general term loan uh, the objective of this scheme is to provide assistance for uh, new as well as expansion and modernization of the uh, manufacturing units. This is for purchase of uh, plant and machinery, construction of building, as well as purchase of SIPCOT or SITCO lands. And quantum of loan is from minimum 5 lakhs to maximum 30 crores. And promoter's contribution is one third of the project cost. Collateral is 50% of the term loan. Repayment period is nine years, including two years of moratorium period. So in this mo in moratorium period, only interest uh, have to pay. Uh, from third year, principal plus interest is starts. Uh, from uh, eligible candidates can avail 25% capital subsidy, maximum of 50 lakhs under this scheme. 6% interest subvention is available for this uh, general term loan. Next is equipment finance scheme. This is exclusively exclusive for purchase of plant and machinery. Uh, minimum loan is 5 lakhs and a maximum is 10 crores. The, under this scheme, uh, promoter contribution is minimum. That is 15 percentage on project cost. Repayment period is 5 years, uh, including 3 to 12 months of holiday period. Under this scheme, only 25 percent collateral is required. Next is micro and small enterprises funding scheme that is MSEF. This is for benefit of the new and new entrepreneurs. That is the project cost should not exceed 50 lakhs. For this, uh, from existing machinery also include new machines also including 50 lakhs project cost should not exceed. Quantum of the loan is minimum 5 lakhs and maximum is 40 lakhs. Under this scheme, um, promoter contribution is only 20% of the project cost and collateral is 50% of the loan amount. Is in, uh, holiday period is 6 months and repayment period is 6 years. And the major uh, uh, scheme is a need scheme which is a government uh, uh, established scheme and we are funding in that also. Under this scheme, uh, first generation entrepreneur we are assisting for first generated that is educated youth in the state that is where he should have he, he will be the first generation in this in their family he, he must be qualified as either a degree or a diploma and age category is 21 to 35 years for general and 21 to 45 years for special categories under this scheme, uh, promoter contribution is only 5 to 10 percentage and collateral security is 50 percent of loan amount. Uh, repayment period is 9 years including 2 years of uh, moratorium period. Project cost is uh, minimum from 10 lakhs to maximum 5 crores. Um, subsidy is 25 percent on the project cost maximum of 50 lakhs. A 6% interest subvention is applicable under this scheme. 
so for a young generations who are uh, going to start new business can avail this scheme which is benefited next is flexi working capital loan this is for mainly for working capital purposes for manufacturing and processing industries including rice mill units to meet their uh, working capital needs maximum loan amount is 2 crores promoter's contribution is 25% and collateral security ranges from 125 to 150 percentage uh, under this uh, scheme what is working capital loan and in thick means uh, it's not like uh, bank we are providing they are providing od facility whenever you want you are using and repaying in banks we are providing has a term loans you have to repay in 3 years uh, period that is it's like a term loan fast track equipment finance scheme this is a newly established scheme in dic this is mainly for what is the benefit is you can provide either 25 percent collateral make 20 percent security deposit that is 20 percent or 20 percent on project cost this 25 percent capital subsidy is available for missionary purchase Minimum loan amount is 10 lakhs to 1 crore. Repayment period is, is 60 months with under Thule scheme. This is also a newly established scheme for uh, uh, graduates that uh, B, B take or B form with uh, three years experience in technical field or diploma in above categories with six years experience can avail a uh, loan under this scheme. This unit is for new as well as existing unit for less than five years. Under this scheme, 25 percent is, is um, margin and 6 percent interest subvention is available. Seven years is repayment period. Minimum loan amount is 50 lakhs to maximum of three crores. And medical practitioner scheme. This This is mainly for um, medical line people, the, for purchase of medical equipments and other related assets. Quantum of the loan is minimum 10 lakhs to 1 crores. Collateral security is 20% of the Collateral is 20% or security deposit is 20%. Joshua, sir, am I, am I edible? Yes, ma'am, we can hear you, ma'am. Please go ahead. We can hear you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Next is open term loan. This is for our existing clients, existing clients of TIC only. This is for mainly purchase of uh, machinery. Ranging from 5 lakhs to 1.5 crores. And margin is 15% of um, project cost. Next is privileged customer scheme. Uh, loan ranging from 5 lakh to 50 lakhs. That is, uh, that is, is 3 years with moratorium of three months. What is the advantage is the no promoter contribution under the scheme and collateral is extension of primary land and building and collateral security. Only extension not offering any new security. And schemes for other service sectors. So till this we have seen for manufacturing sector. Now for service sectors, what are all the schemes available is for uh, construction of commercial complex, community hall, hotel under godowns are covering under a service sector the project cost is maximum up to 12 crores we are funding collateral security is 50 percent of the project cost repayment period is nine years with a holiday period of two years and one third is the promoter's contribution under this scheme next is my doctor and doctor plus scheme these are all the new schemes mainly for medical practitioners Loan we are providing ranging from 10 lakhs to 15 crores. Uh, collateral is flexible based on the project and repayment period is 9 years with including holiday period. 
promoter contribution ranges from 15% to 35% based on a uh, scheme that is maybe you are requiring for equipment or building or land and building so it is from 15 to 35 percentage it is eligible for individuals and partnerships not for uh, private limited age is uh, 25 to 60 years eligible for under this scheme and next is a uh, uh, chorus this is for our uh, tick assisted units only for COVID-19, we have formulated a new scheme, COVID-19, uh, ranging from 2 lakhs to 25 lakhs. Repayment period is uh, 3 years, including holiday period of 6 months. No additional collat collateral security is required for this scheme, only extension of existing collateral securities. And 6% interest subvention is available for this scheme. Next is Chorus Plus scheme. This is a newly formulated scheme. This is for non-assisted units of TIAC, uh, loan ranging from 10 lakhs to 50 lakhs. Promoter contribution is nil. Repayment period is 5 years with a 12 months holiday period. What is the quantum of the loan we are giving is 20% of the turnover of audited financial year. The one, only condition is the borrower should not avail any loan from banks in this scheme. And the CMR is, uh, sh should be 6 and below. Civil score should be 650 and above for the clients. And 6% interest subvention is available for chorus plus schemes. Next is bill finance scheme. The objective is for discounting purchase order uh, giving from TNEB, TWAT, TAN Transco and TNPL. There is no collateral security. And the credit period is 240 days for each bill. And we are giving 85% uh, of the bill value, not exceeding the sanctioning amount. And we are following the credit ratings. Uh, based on that, we are uh, giving weightage for the uh, projects. And what are our, our uh, organizational structure for sanctioning is for up to one crore, we are sanctioning in brand sanction committee. And 1 crore to 4 crores, we are providing in regional level sanction committee. 4 to 6 crores, executive committee. And above 6 crores, uh, we are sanctioning in our board. And what are the we are providing in TIC is 6% interest subvention. Previously, it was uh, 3%. Now, it has been increased from 3 to 6% for micro and small enterprises and 3% for medium enterprises. What are the government subsidies you can avail? Is um, micro units which, which is established anywhere in Tamil Nadu. Number one for micro units. Next is small and medium units that is located in uh, backward blocks. Government has notified 251 uh, block as backward blocks and units which are located in that blocks are eligible for uh, this backward block subsidy. And next is trust sector and agro-based in industries. For trust sector, government has notified around 187 products. If you are manufacturing any of the product that is in 187 products, you can you are eligible for availing this that trust sector subsidy. What is the amount of sub, uh, subsidy in this scheme? Is 25% of investment in plant and machinery, maximum of 50 lakhs. So, example, if you are availing for a 10 lakh Missionary means uh, 2.5 lakhs you are eligible for subsidy. And previously we are providing generator subsidy now it has been stopped uh, temporarily. Apart from apart from this, we are giving a CLCS credit linked capital subsidy. This is 15% on eligible missionary, maximum of 15 lakhs. This is a central uh, government subsidy. And TIC is the nodal agency for uh, disbursing uh, both. So you can avail both loan and subsidy in TIC itself. And uh, that's all, sir. Thank you. I thanks. Uh, Joshua, sir, I'm adequate.
Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. We can hear you. Please go ahead. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, that's all our schemes uh, from TIEC. Okay. And, uh, I thank Siki for for organizing this fruitful event uh, for the benefit of uh, MSMEs and uh, giving me this opportunity to share about uh, TIC and our schemes. So please share this information so to your uh, friends and relatives. And if any clarifications or requirement, please contact us. And uh, I I will give my phone number and. Uh, mail id also to the siki and if you, for further information please contact our website uh, www.tiectic.org for more information about our uh, schemes yes thank you ma'am that was very much informative now we'll move to the next uh, of this event so so now we have mr uh, srikant gopalan from uh, SMB Enablers, he is the promoter for SMB Enablers. So he's going to talk on a topic called, a very interesting topic called Cash is King. So Mr. Srikant Gopalan is a qualified chartered accountant and cost account uh, with exposure to diverse business operations in the area of project management, planning and development. But of his work experiences in corporate finance. He has also demonstrated ability in areas of corporate finance, particularly in areas like capital structuring, enterprise valuation due diligence m a debt and equity syndication ecb and entire gamut of uh, debt resolution framework he is also senior level executive with extensive um, corporate finance experience in diverse industries adapted analyzing the financial availability of new ventures new projects and forecast the amount of uh, project finance funds required so he is an adroit in uh, preparing annual budgets business plans internal projections Strong qualifications in general management, business planning systems, implementation, and staff development. He is also an effort, effective dealer with excellent, excellent, uh, leader, excellent uh, communication skills, analytical skills, team building, and also relationship management skills. So, in this regard, we welcome Mr. Srikant Gopalan to deliver this uh, address on Cash is King. And we are also very much excited to hear about what he's going to uh, give us. Sir, we welcome you, sir. Please go ahead. Sir, please unmute your mic, sir. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. You're audible now. Please go ahead, sir. Okay. Okay, fine. Let me just share this screen. Thanks, Joshua, for the nice introduction. I really didn't know I, I did all this. Anyway. <laughs> uh, Thank you, sir. Uh, okay. Uh, Along the way, I'll be, you know, using a bit of Tamil also so that, you know, I'm, I'm a bit closer to everyone. So let me just share the screen. Sir, can you be, uh, can you please be a little louder, sir? Yeah, sure. Is it fine now? Yes, yes, please go ahead. Okay. So I have, I'm going to talk about actually cash flow is king. It is not just cash flow, uh, cash is king. End of the day, the purpose of business is to generate positive and adequate yeah. cash flow. So that is what I'm going to talk about. Most of the speakers before me said what is available for you to take from the market in terms of loans, equity, public issue and stuff like that i'm going to talk about things that will make you eligible to receive this these loans and i'm going to talk about the problems i'm going to talk about the need for introspection the way we work as msme okay so this has been my area of operation for nearly 30 years now and uh, you know I, our firm SMB enablers stand for stand and small and medium business. So that's what we are. So let me just go ahead with it. Let's start with the screen. End of the day, first, all you need to understand is the value of your asset, value of your business is just the cash flow. It is not the asset you hold. It is not the collateral security that you have given. 
it, it is not the assets that are lying in your uh, personal name. I mean, personal name is an asset. It's all right. As far as the business is concerned, regardless of whatever you hold in the balance sheet, if it is an, uh, there is only one major operational asset and that is the cash flow. Um, Mr. Sandil Murugan talked about the valuation and the valuation depends on the cash flow. Uh, future loan repayment depends on the cash flow. Uh, the value of your company actually depends on the cash flow. Most of the MSME doesn't know what the value of the company is. So, uh, in order to get all these things, first you have to understand what is the free cash flow. The free cash flow determines the value of the firm. You have to understand what is ca free cash flow. It is nothing. It's a very, very simple thing. Assume a world where you are not really paying any interest or loan and everything is your equity. You have a profit after tax. To that you add depreciation and the interest component you add. These are all the total cash inflows. Depreciation we are not paying to anyone. Profit na make cash over there. And the interest assuming you don't pay and you have this cash available. This is the cash inflow. These are all, and there are two necessary cash outflows out of that. Okay. So regardless of what business you are in, you may be in service, you may be in manufacturing, you may be hybrid. You may have to replace machinery off and on. If you are in service, tooling has to be replaced. computer every year. There is going to be a cost involved every year. Okay. There is a replacement capex. Project higher capacity utilization, other than capital cost. So there is a capital cost involved that has to be put. Remember, we have assumed that there is no interest and no principal. We are going to put the money, and that money has to be generated. And the next one is you know, you are growing. When you are growing fast, or when you are growing in any rate, 5%, 10%, even 100%. When you are growing, you have to give more credit. You have to stock more material. You have to employ more people. You need more of a working capital, which you understand. In fact, you know, we have been manipulating it. I'll come to it a little later. So there is a change in working capital. Last year, working capital is 100 in the version 120. So that 20 has to be provided for. That has to also come from the profit in a healthy situation. After doing all this, what you are left with is the free cash flow to the firm. You add the profit after tax to depreciation and the interest and then reduce the capital expenditure, reduce the additional working capital need. Once you do all this, what you get is the cash, free cash flow to the firm. You have to understand this very clearly. If this free cash flow is negative, that's when we take our volatile security and go to NBFC to raise loans. So, so long as this free cash flow is positive, sufficiently positive, you are healthy. It is this free cash flow with which you can pay the interest if you take loan, with which you can pay the principal you can, if you take loan. Otherwise, sickness will build. So always have an eye on free cash flow to the firm. That is the most important fundamental lesson every entrepreneur should know. Uh, like Ravi sir said, entrepreneurs actually know to make, convert, sell and collect. Rest of the ecosystem and finance, you know, they probably need help. That's where, you know, you need a real professional. Most of the businesses are, are profitable, but there are problems, you know. The way we have been working, you know, it is the time for introspection. Uh, I'm going to be brutally honest about the way we are working. Yeah, especially most of you may be having cash credit and, you know, if you have come here, it means that there could be some kind of a pressure with your cash flow scenario. We have started the business and we are doing something and uh, um, uh, Ravi sir nebulously put it and I am going to blatantly put that same thing to you. He was talking about the restating of the balance sheet. Okay. 
So, uh, this is something we need to really, really concentrate. What we have been doing in the past, I am not saying all, I am not saying uh, none, somewhere along the line, every one of us have done something like this. You know, suddenly a machinery breaks down and uh, we have to replace the machinery. And we don't, uh, banker is not going to give you the term loan and tick is going to take another six months before you disperses. So what do you do? The next best thing that you do is uh, take the money out of your cash credit limit and then buy a machinery. Okay. It is a diversion of long term, uh, short term funds into your long term. But unfortunately, end of the month comes immediately. And the banker will want DP. Uh, that is the drawing power. We all know about it. So what is drawing power? Drawing power is 75% of book debts minus creditors. We have taken some money out. Of course for the business. Not for any personal use or nothing uh, sinister about it. We have done a genuine expenditure. But from a wrong account into a wrong head. With the result what has, what has happened is. You have to. End of the month, you will have to repay that money. If the cash flow is not adequate, what we end up doing it? Let's say interest rate. The chances are we increase the stock, we increase the receivables, and reduce the creditors and give the statement to the banker. Banker is happy and we are happy. But unfortunately, the year end also comes. If the year end the auditor is going to certify a particular stock and uh, that stock has to match with the stock that you are going to give to the bank. So when you do that, so somewhere along the way media you have to increase. But you cannot increase the stock and receivable. If you increase the stock, what happens is uh, your consumption goes down and your actual profit. Your profit that you are showing in the books is actually more than the profit and you are paying more taxes than what is needed. So uh, by doing all this, what happens? This is the cycle. Obtain so you inflate the stock and of AR and DP. In order to manage that, you increase the sales and the expenses to cover the DP. And then show more profits, pay more taxes and apply for more loans and this is the cycle. In the bargain what happens is, we really don't know where we stand. I don't blame oh, only the entrepreneur, but you know, it is the system. You go to the auditor and the bank is going to, uh, and the auditor is going to tell me, uh, tell you last year, 6% 6 was the return on investment. And, uh, uh, I mean, 6% uh, was the profit. We cannot show 20% profit. You may have made 20% loss or 20% profit, but still your book has to show 6% because otherwise income tax officer will question. In this scenario, we end up clicking the book. Let us be brutally honest because the changing times are coming. That's what I'm going to speak about and we have to be ready for it. Otherwise, it is going to be very difficult. So, <laughs> and uh, what is the changing time? There is a lot of talk for the past two or three years about cash flow based lending. Everybody is talking about two. Other, uh, there are two things, you know. Present method of lending is uh, asset based, for, at least for MSME. That is, if you have a collateral, then you get the loan. Okay. It is an inefficient way of financing. Uh, in the sense, if something goes bad, banks are unable to recover the money for 10 years and 20 years. Okay, so uh, what is collateral? Collateral is just mental safety. So, advanced economies are moving towards what is called cash flow based lending. Your cash flow is what is going to determine what is the cash flow, uh, what is the requirement of your, but that is needed in the sense even in one year there will be a cycle. If you are a spinning mill during cotton season, you will need to buy a lot of raw materials. So working capital requirement is much higher during that time than the value. How many half of us have fixed uh, peak and value limits? We have not. Instead, what we have done, we have an average limit. During the peak, we go and uh, 
take money elsewhere or you know postpone the credit cards coin the name and things like that instead if we are uh, moving towards a cash flow based um, loan system this will be taken into account and actually you know you will get a much better loan company of course there will be a need for a collateral but collateral will be in mental safety and your determinant will be cash flow if you have to have a so the banks are resistant you know the talks have, have been on you know committee was formed in 2017 on this talks are on and going on and on and it's almost the fourth year now nothing has come through mainly because the bankers also know balance sheets are just that so we have to seriously think in terms of moving and cleaning the balance sheet and restating the balance sheet in some form often i stand to think you know like a vds scheme vivad she vishwas scheme maybe an amnesty scheme for cleaning the balance sheet should be considered by the government i mean it's a tall claim it's very difficult to do but maybe they can consider it so this is something you need to really think through okay so this needs rectification because of the changing times gst taxation higher level of compliance the business cannot exactly run the way it has been running in the past for 20 30 40 years and we have to have a relook at the way we are working and systematically we have to work towards restating the balance sheet in such a way that the actual working of the company is reflected in the financials once you get there nsc will be more than give you happy to give fund you money and ever everywhere funding is possible once we get there so have a serious look at it and there is help available and we will be able to help or many professionals can help you in that uh instead of really getting into shortcuts so uh we can get there it is just the will that is needed but we need to change this if we have to prosper and grow otherwise our growth will be shunted okay so once we do this there is lot of support you know a uh, lot about the loan schemes of tick and other things people have talked and the banks have got collateralist funding methods which you know nbfcs are available and the recent scheme that is announced uh, apart from stock exchange and the loan schemes is the equity support to ms smes you know uh it is a pretty good scheme has not taken off too much as yet in date again more because you know our we have to create a believable balance sheet and it has to take time so finance minister has an announced a scheme for 50000 crores okay uh, the scheme operates this way uh, sibbi is the uh, yes. sibbi venture capital fund is the nodal agency they don't directly invest in any company they invest it in other aif aif means alternate investment funds or venture capital and private equity funds they give the money to them and and uh, the venture capital fund in turn uh, invests when they do it venture capital fund has to put twice the money it is receiving from uh, um, receiving from sibbi so what happens is 50000 crores is the limit available and another 100000 crores have to be put by aifs alternate investment funds or merchant bank i mean uh, private equity funds the total fund available in the market for equity is uh, 150000 crores okay at a 1 is to 4 debt ratio another 6 lakh crore debt debt can be raised if we can use the money that is an infusion of another 7 lakh 50000 crores for msme which is roughly 50% of the total credit available today so msme can grow 50 to 60% just by using this scheme but we have to be ready for the scheme are we ready is the question we have to ask ourselves okay so 
Think of cleaning up as the process. Okay, it is not like it is going to happen tomorrow. It has to be a step by step process. Uh, Kadamari ma'am has suggested one thing working capital loan up to 50 lakhs or whatever. You can take that working capital loan for 50 lakhs and then you know put it in your uh, uh, cash credit account and then make sure that you reduce that limit to match your actual stock, actual receivable, actual creditors. You find your actual working capital cycle and use only that money for working capital from cash credit. Rest of it take as a term loan. That is the only way with which you will be able to clean up the balance sheet and start cleaning it. Second is, uh, once you ascertain the networking capital, prepare the realistic projection showing the actual sales uh here some kind of selling is an order we have created a web platform called the cma.docscot.com you give your last three years balance sheet it assumes 10 year 10 percent projection rate and gives you give you the valuation give you the projections and give you the cma for uh, the next uh, even 12 years to see where you stand and it does it gives you the enterprise valuation it gives, uh, uh, I mean, it takes all the industry averages of NSE and uh, calculates based on EBITDA multiple, calculates based on sales multiple. All the method of valuation is available just to give you a ballpark number. It is not a correct valuation. If you ask me to value, I will not value that. It may be more, it may be less, but it will give you a directional. Every year, if it grows, then it means that you are growing. So prepare a realistic projection. Whether you value your company or not, have a clear cut projection and check whether it will actually meet your loan requirements. If it doesn't, there is time for equity pumping in, whether through friends and relatives or something. It is a step by step process. It may take six months, one year, three years to clean up the whole process and become totally compliant. And, uh, and then those of you who are proprietary concerned or partnership concerned, if you are uh, already uh, uh, in a, if you already have a reasonable size, good turnover, say 20 crores or 15 crores or something like that, please consider becoming a private limited company because it is needed for the cleanup process. Uh, partnership and uh, proprietary ship taxation is still very high compared to corporate taxation. <laughs> corporate, corporate taxation is, if you are not into R&D or accelerated depreciation scenario, your present rate is, uh, I think, 24.4% net effective rate. Uh, but partnership pays much more. A very pro, um, prosperous proprietary concern pays much more. Why pay to the government? Instead, reduce your working capital so that clean up the balance. Okay, consider becoming a so systematically reduce the excess cash credit. If you have a cash credit the excess, then consider reducing it. We have to really have an introspection and we have to do this. And we can have a plan. Once you think you will come to know. Once you talk to a few professionals, you will be able to do it. Uh, and uh, and then I suggest ask for a term loan if you have DSCR and reduce the working capital limit. And if it is not feasible, infuse the EPT. These are all the basic needs that you have to do. Once you do, there is no death of finance. Okay, there is a lot of ample finance available. Speaker after speaker before me talked about what are the schemes available. I am talking about the way in which it will ask um, people will come to your doorstep, knock your door and give you the money. It is possible. It is quite easy to do it. It, it all takes the will. Okay. So try and do that with that. Anyway, this is what we do. We do corporate finance advisory, projection valuation, etc. And then transmission of shares to the legal heads. These are all the services that we in case you need any help, you can contact me anytime. So I'll be available to you. 
I think I have slightly rather overshortened my time too much. I am sorry about it, Joshua. I could not stop when I start when I get a mic. That's a weakness. Thanks a lot. Thanks for hearing me. Give yourself a serious thought and have an introspection. Let me close it. Okay. Thanks. Bye. Thank you, sir. That was a wonderful session. So now we the now we welcome Mr. Shanmuga, the zonal lead of zonal lead and product excellence from Tally Solutions Limited. Uh, Mr. Shanmuga has more than 25 years of total experience working with various software product companies. Expertise in understanding SMEs adequate domain knowledge in financial accounting, entry management, taxation. He has been associated with Tally for more than uh, 14 years in sales and marketing group. He has also worked closely with Tally partners and has played a major role in enabling the sources on uh, sales and services. He has also been a uh, speaker for uh, more than uh, 50 customer events across India representing Tally. Sir, we cordially welcome you for this event and we are very, very much excited to hear from you, sir. Thank you, Joshua. Uh, good morning, one and all. Uh, I again welcome you all once again for this event. So when I received this uh, uh, invite from Joshua, the title of the event was Financial Clinic. Uh, in fact, it was more interesting for me because uh, I think the word clinic, uh, we have learned a lot uh, this year. Uh, I think during this pandemic, am I audible, uh, Joshua? Can you just confirm? Yes, it's very much audible, sir. Please go ahead. Okay. okay. I'll Meanwhile, I'll also share the uh, screen. Just confirm. Is it visible? Okay. Yes, sir. We can hear uh, see your screen, but it's actually blank. We couldn't see any PPT or something. Okay, we'll just see. Let me reshare once again. Okay. Still blank, so we couldn't see any yeah, PPT. I'm going to reshare it. Okay. I'm not getting the option. Yeah. Share. Uh, is it visible now? Yes, yeah, sir. Now we can see, sir. Okay. Can you just confirm I have changed the screen? Is it visible now? Yeah, it's visible, sir. We can see, sir. Okay. Thanks and uh, sorry for that small uh, glitch. Oh, technique. Sir, glitch. No, please go ahead. Yeah. I was just talking about uh, the uh, the whatever we have learned uh, during this pandemic. So all of us learned a lot uh, because now we have completely dependent on technology. Uh, we never, I think, uh, imagine uh, we are on meeting such for such kind of events virtually. So when I actually got the invite uh, from Joshua, it was written there as financial clinic at Vellore. Uh, I was just imagining, okay, if this event is happening in uh, Vellore and all of us definitely meeting there and uh, definitely the Kadambari madam uh, will be waiting to enthusiastically welcoming us. Uh, of course, yes, uh, now uh, this uh, virtual meetings has become part of our life. And uh, in another way, it is also advantage because we can save a lot of time. Uh, and uh, in this 20 minutes, I would like to uh, take you through some of the uh, important aspects what Tally has done in terms of uh, uh, maintaining our books and how this, uh, these things are going to help the business owner and uh, comparing to the connecting with the today's uh, session. So how uh, Tally can help the business owner uh, with respect to analyzing their health of their business. Okay, how quickly they can get those reports uh, which are going to be help uh, helping them to take a quick decision in their business. Uh, I believe, see, most of you uh, there in uh, Tally's journey. In the last uh, three decades, we have uh, innovated uh, a lot of things uh, with the help of people like you, the business entrepreneurs. They have started using our technology and giving the feedback to us. And you are part of this journey. 
so with this in this financial year this year uh, in 2020 in month of november we came out with a, a new product that is tally prime so the tally prime we came out uh, with an objective of uh, basically uh, simplifying the simplest you know that uh, tally is already simple with the, our tagline itself it is called power of simplicity uh, but you just imagine we are talking now more uh, simplification in this and we tried giving greater flexibility thinking that uh, the person who is working on tally should have more flexibility such that he can get anything he want on this on the fly so whenever he want some reports so he should get it and whenever you want to change the view of the report he should it should be available for him so those things has been taken care and uh, since it's almost three decades old uh, software so we used to get a lot of feedback from the youngsters saying sir we need to make bring the fresh look and feel so considering our uh, old users and new users uh, we came out with some fresh look uh, not even again disappointing the old people uh, that was the uh, main objective these three objectives we came out uh, of course in the first release we had uh, brought a lot of the experiences uh, for the user experiences uh, i'm uh, definitely i can't cover all those things i'll quickly highlight some of the things which are useful for today's session so the one is the browsing thing so what is this browsing thing meaning uh, when you open see this, this is a tally prime screen so when you open tally now it looks like this and if you look at now uh, it you get a feeling of uh, actual any erp other erp traditional erp software all menus the drop down menus you can see here and uh, the mouse is completely operatable now so whenever you select any company or uh, whenever you uh, go to a particular ledger so the it is completely operatable i am operating on mouse only so you can explore any folder so keeping that uh, people who are actually using mouse uh, the comfortable uh, by operating the software so this is one of the major change we brought in where uh, uh, browsing has become very simple in tally and uh, the next aspect is coming to the data entry person so the, you can get all the reports or any report in tally only when the data entry is made properly and uh, made on time then only it is actually you can get the uh, reports and the proper reports you can get it so considering the uh, the changes which are required for the data data entry person also we have made some changes again we are keeping the uh, existing thing in mind so for the user uh, when he is making data entry he can actually uh, make the entry so with simplicity the lot of simplicity wherein he he would like to actually capture for example let's say somebody is passing a sale transaction sales transaction and for this he would like to enter more and more information to it for example he want to enter the, the dispatch details so the dispatch details can be selected here on the screen or you want to modify something for the party so you can actually go and change party on the screen so the we have actually simplified uh, the data entry person life uh, so easy and so simple uh, at the time of making data entry he can any time go to click on a button a magical button called more details which helps him to actually enter or uh, modify any existing information or you can go on add any details so i would like to add uh, order details for a particular transaction so he need not get into the complete the transaction he can just click on other details and he can capture those informations there okay and uh, coming back to the other things what all other things are actually uh, made simple for the data entry person you just imagine your uh, accountant or assistant who is working on a software and definitely he will, he has to do multitasking at the time of uh, working suppose if he is there in a uh, middle of the some transaction entry definitely there will be a need for him to generate some reports you as a business owner you can go always ask him can you just give me some report so what we have done here is so keeping that in mind now we can do a multitasking thing using this top line uh, top menu on the tally suppose if you are asking him to print something so you can actually so be he being in the uh, data entry screen he can just go to print and he can print any report suppose you are asking for a uh, outstanding report a ledger outstanding of a particular ledger 
so you can actually print and give it and once he complete that task so without disturbing he can come back to his original task what he was doing earlier so what i mean to say here is uh, for the data entry person of course now the multitasking has become very very simple okay so that's one part and coming back to the main and very important thing which we have brought in tally is uh, the reports so you being business owner Uh, you will always look into the report and looking at the report is uh, very very important for any any organization so if you just compare our earlier product there also it was giving lot of reports and uh, you might be using lot of other reports to take decision but now we have brought in uh, the very one important feature that's called go to so what is this go to is going to do is you click on go to and you can type any report okay it will basically give you a screen uh, where in a uh, table on the screen where in it will display the headings also of the reports if you want to generate balance sheet you can go to your balance sheet and you can drill down here you can go to a particular thing this is also possible so this the basic behavior of tally has not been removed here and basically the go to will help for the business manager to find out any report and just click of a button suppose let's say i would like to see the stock summary of my uh, godown so you can just you have to just go to click on go to and type stock summary so the stock summary which is available for you in the godown it will be displaying and srikanth sir actually was talking when in his presentation um, so you can actually there is a time to change okay so when you are looking at a uh, very important reports uh, like cash related reports so you would like would like to know what is the cash flow projection so the report which is coming to my mind you can just go to click on go to and you can just type cash projection or cash flow cash books bank books and whenever you generate any report for a particular report you can actually change the view of this report by giving the ledger view and you can generate any exceptional reports which is negative cash even when actually the cash has gone negative so this happens uh, during the operations right so if somebody has not entered all the transactions then it may go to the negative Uh, where you can go and find out. So go to is one uh, feature wherein you can you can go and explore all the reports which are available in Tally. So if you, on the screen you can see now it is showing some uh, common headings under that there are some reports you can actually uh, click on show more and it will show further more and there are show inactive reports there are expand all if you click in Tally. Uh, has got more than 377 reports which are available here so i want a cash flow projection report and click on cash projection report you can see here the cash flow projection for the uh, next 3 4 months which is the, the data which is available actually till december so it is actually talking about the projection for jan feb march so considering whatever receivable payables which is captured in your book of accounts so this definitely helps you to take decision as a business owner and uh, when it comes to the operation part the go to is one which uh, uh, it it becomes one one single key which help you to do lot many things not only the report purpose so if you want to just uh, create an voucher at the time of uh, you are generating a report for example you as a business owner you are looking into some reports okay let's say you are in some stock summary report and at the same time there is if you are also uh, making some entries uh, there is a need of creating voucher yes you can create voucher from here itself you can make go and make a receipt entry or a payment entry whichever is uh, needed for that time and once you complete that yes it will bring back to you the place where you were looking it earlier and not only that it it will allow also to create some masters it will also allow to create the vouchers and 
suppose if you are looking into multiple reports for example now i am in balance uh, stock summary report and let's say i am in balance sheet and for some instance you also went for the pnl report so definitely when you are analyzing uh, your financial data you will be looking into multiple reports and in between if there is any interruption came in and for 10 minutes you just deviated your time and working on some other thing so when you come back uh, you may lose the context of actually what you were doing it earlier so here we have provided a, a beautiful feature that's called show open reports so this will actually bring back to to the original context where if you click on this it will show you which are those reports which you are actually reviewing earlier so you can go to a particular report and you can continue the uh, work which you are doing it okay and uh, not only that again uh, this basis of value change view and exception report these three magical keys uh, which are available in all the reports this will give a different uh, application or the, the different operations with respect to the different different reports when you click on change view here on the uh, balance sheet you may get a uh, vertical format for example if you are there in the other report let's say you are in uh, stock summary report so when you click on the change view you will get different options so i would like to see my monthly summary you can look at monthly summary report you can also look into the moment analysis of your stock okay for all the brands you can look at moment analysis of the report and you can see the aging analysis of the stock so what what actually one major thing we we have brought in here is the navigation of any report has been now become very simple and you need not actually remember those navigation path whenever you need any report just click on go to a type a report and whenever the report is opened for that particular report whatever changes you want to bring in the whatever view you want to get into so you can always go to the change view and change the view of the report okay and uh, apart from that in some of the report you can also see the basis value for example now uh, it is showing the stock summary report the value which you are seeing here it is calculated on some uh, uh, valuation method so if you want to change the valuation method for it you can always go and change the valuation method so it, it has taken a default uh, that's average method suppose if you want to change your view of the same report okay to fifo method so by just changing fifo now you can see you can view your stock summary report at a fifo and some other magical keys like adding new column now the same report i would like to compare with multiple column so you can add column and uh, you can in the add column you can have multiple things so one column i would like to see fifo and the next column i would like to see the last purchase cost so similar way you can have the multiple uh, uh, types of valuation you can put and you can have a look at the item level what is the value of each item and you can also see the total here so what i'm trying to remind you here is whenever you go to any report the first thing is now navigating report has become very simple what is that just click on go to and type the report and when you are there in that report for that report you can give any view by using these three magical keys so one is change the view other one is the basis value you can change the basis value for this and the other one is any exception report for example for this stock you will have an exception report like if there is any sale order outstanding for a particular item or i have placed the purchase order to my supplier i would like to know which are those purchase orders pending so what actually we are trying to solve here is uh, uh, when you as a business owner when you are looking into any reports uh the train of thought which is coming in your mind it has got a link from one report to other report that's the first part and second part is you need not remember any navigation path uh, you would have uh, noted down some of the things while working with tally rp9 okay for moment analysis report this is the place we should where i should go and actually find it so you can slightly have to now unlearn it has become very simple now in tally prime uh just click up a button you can see the report okay so that's about the report part 
and uh, I have covered data entry part also. And the top menu is one which I already talked about uh, in in the product. This top menu uh, basically the objective of this top menu is to do multitasking. So the person who is operating on any uh, operations in Tally Prime. So while he is doing that, he can always go to use use this menu and he can perform any other options. Either it is print, import, export. Somebody wants to file the return. Okay, at the time of making entry, you can do at the time of generating any reports, you can perform any of these operations by using this top menu. So what it is going to do is this definitely help you to do multitasking. OK, I have covered this go to go to is definitely uh, we believe, as I said, uh, the accountant who is working on this, who is actually generating a lot of reports, will become now so happy and he can do definitely multitasking. Now the navigation has become so flexible now and it is very easy and easy to learn and uh, remember. And I've also talked about the these three magical keys, the change view, basis of value and exception report. Uh, these things are definitely going to help you to analyze any of your reports. Of course, uh, when uh, Chandil Morgan was talking about uh, the various options available okay, in the uh, this thing. So there is one report I thought of just showing you when you go to uh, go to. There is one report which tally helps the ratio analysis. The ratio analysis is one which gives a financial status of your company. So it gives a quick ratio. It is a calculator and it gives a quick ratio. And it also gives you what is the gross profit, net profit, receivable turnover in days for this particular company okay, based on the period we have selected. So which talks about the complete history of from working capital to the return on working capital. So the only thing is see uh, if you have if you are capturing the uh, information and if you are entering the transactions all the transactions and this report become so useful for you and you can take a quicker decision in your business okay and uh, coming back to the next the another point which uh, again uh, relating to the technology uh, or the time which we are now there uh, giving tally reports in browser so uh, the scenario is yes of course now uh, going to office every day it is difficult for business owners and uh, sometime if you are there outside not in office definitely uh, getting the information on your fingertip okay uh, without logging in or without using laptop uh, now it is possible in tally that is uh, you can see tally reports in browser okay so let me just show you for example the same reports i'll what i'll do i'll just connect this company and if you are outside you can always see this report and without uh, loading tally software okay on the browser you can look into all these reports the company which is connected you can see now the same go to menu which was there it is now available in uh, browser also and not only that, uh, in fact, uh, you can see uh, these reports even on mobile. I'll just try to attempt that to show uh, on if you can see my mobile. I have created a shortcut, tally shortcut here. I'll just click on this. If let's say I'm away from the office. Okay, now it has opened tally website. I'm just logging in by giving my user cre uh, credential, user ID and password. And for me, it is saying, yes, the company is connected. And on my mobile, I'm just clicking the company. So you can see the reports which you have seen on um, the laptop, which are same thing available on my mobile. So it has become so handy. Uh, you can generate any report, not only generating reports or viewing report. You can drill down till the voucher level and you can also export in PDF and Excel format. So that that kind of capability which is there. So the technology is available. Only thing you have to make use of. It. So the data is now available anywhere, anytime, any device. And uh, after GST, let me just take uh, two, 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 more, two more topics I'll touch upon and I'll uh, 
uh, close the session and if any questions are there i'll take it so after the gst uh, many of the businesses they started using uh, invoice printing and uh, since there if there is any number of skus are more in a uh, same page definitely they were used to uh, wasting paper okay that has been optimized uh, in tally prime so what what optimization we have done is i'll just quickly show the demo of it so for example i'm just uh, opening an invoice uh, which has got some uh, 40 items in one single invoice okay and when you print it it was uh, printing it and it was uh, running in almost uh, 16 pages okay of course it was printing all the details which are actually asked by the user okay so what we have done here is uh, we have just simplified it again with uh, option called uh, optimize printing to save paper you can save the paper by just optimizing and uh, disabling which are options are not required for you in the invoice and you can reduce the paper also okay i'll just preview the same invoice again you can see here now the number of pages uh, which was there 16 pages has been now reduced to 13 uh, three pages now it's printing in three pages and it is also giving all the required information which is available the one thing what it is doing is which is uh, making use of the entire uh, sheet which is there okay the area of the uh, sheet and it is not printing uh, unnecessary thing in the second page okay in second page whatever is required only it is printing so with this it is allowing you to optimize uh, at the time of printing any invoice okay uh, the next is I think I don't know how many of you are doing this, but uh, in my view, yes, it is going to be the uh, roadmap in upcoming uh, months, uh, e-invoicing. So currently the e-invoicing is applicable for the uh, companies uh, whose turnover is uh, more than 100 crore. Uh, in fact, it is started in October only for 500 crore companies. Uh, for 100 crore companies from January, they started generating e-invoicing. And as for our information department may also think of implementing this for all the uh, businesses whose turnover is more than 5 crore uh, from next financial year that means from april onwards uh, we have now ready for e invoicing our customers who are uh, more than 100 crore and 500 crore uh, they are happily using this feature so e invoice is ready with our tally prime release 1.1 okay november we launched uh, release 1 and uh, now we are we have came out with release 1.1 uh, again, it is very, very simplified here. Okay, let me just quickly show you how it works uh, with just uploading one e invoice and uh, it, I'll just demonstrate to you. So it is very simple. Okay, as a user, you are just uh, entering a transaction. I'm just passing one sales transaction and filling in all the reports, all the information which is required, selecting an item. King in the quantity and rate. So as you know, it is applicable only for the taxable invoices. If you the tax item is there, then this option will come. Now in the product itself, what happens? The moment you accept, it will ask you. So do you want to generate the e-invoice for this invoice, yes or no? So the moment you say yes, it will connect to the uh, IRP system the GSTN portal, okay, uh, IRP system, it will connect and you will give your login ID and password here. And once you key in your login ID and password in the product itself, so it is communicating to this thing and it's successfully e invoice is generated. And if you come and see the preview of this, your e invoice is printed along with the QR code. You can see here, right? So it is so quick and we have actually not only for this single uh, this thing, we have covered all the uh, uh, different scenarios for e-invoicing, uh, uh, be it for uh, bulk, somebody wants to generate e-invoice for bulk invoices that has been addressed. And if there is any cancellation is required as for the uh, 
time limit which is given by the department uh, if somebody want to uh, cancel it within 24 hours the facility is available or somebody is generating e invoice uh, offline meaning they are going to the portal and generating the invoice but you would like to capture those information back to the system so like this all the scenarios have been uh, incorporated in the system very smoothly and uh, all of uh, the customers who turnover is more than 100 crore uh, they are using this now so this is going to be a, one of the key thing from april onwards just to summarize uh, the tally prime a uh, whole new look uh, a whole new experience uh, i could not definitely take you through a lot of things which i wanted to talk because with 20 minutes it's very difficult uh, of course yes uh, if you require any a detailed session within your uh, association uh, reach out to our partners they'll we are very happy to organize such, uh, such sessions to have a detailed session for your members okay uh, of course it is simple to learn and easy to use and when it comes to the reports okay on the fly you can do a customize those reports and you can have a insightful reports and you can see all these reports anywhere anytime with a complete security on any device so with this uh, i would like to thank uh, siki first uh, for giving us an opportunity uh, to showcase uh, what is there in tally prime uh, i would like to uh, thank ravi sir uh, for your welcome note you mentioned as yes, uh, you wanted to actually help uh, all these uh, msme smes uh, in terms of uh, giving uh, their various options okay uh, i believe this technology is also one of the thing which uh, SMEs can make use of it. Uh, Mahajan, sir, thank you. I think in your uh, speech, you said the various uh, options which are available, which are various schemes which are available. So using this technology, definitely, uh, it will definitely help them uh, to keep track of those information and take benefit of the, out of the scheme, uh, out of the, all the schemes. Sandil uh, Morgan also in his speech, he has mentioned, okay, in NSC, what all things are available. I believe again the technology is going to help uh, Radhambari Madam and Srikant sir. Of course, I think uh, uh, you, you you are the person you 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 can actually uh, vouch for this. Uh, technology is a key here. Uh, I believe this is going to help uh, for all the members who are attending. Thank you again. Thank you so much. That's all from my side. Thank you, sir. That was very much informative. So we, so now we are at the end of the session. So you would like to conclude the session. Uh, well, uh, I would like to conclude the session by thanking each and everyone for participating for the session. I would like to thank Mr. Vishu Mahajan, sir, IAS, uh, Ms. Kadambari, madam from uh, TIG, <clears throat> Mr. Sandil Murugan, sir, from NS, uh, NSC, Mr. Uh, Srikan Gopalan from SMB Enablers, and Mr. Shanmuga, sir, from Tally Solutions. So this session was very much enlightening to this uh, uh, to all the members who participated for the session. As Mr. Ravi correctly said, that MSMEs are very important for for the for the nation. So we do firmly believe uh, for the upcoming uh, series of this event will be very much helpful for the MSMEs to highlight to in, provide insights more on the financial part of uh, uh, their economical um, stability. And uh, I would like to thank Mr. Srikant Gopalan sir for uh, for talking about this cash flow predominantly in, uh, for the MSMEs to how to handle cash and how to you know like manage the finances. And also the, uh, Tally Solutions, Mr. Shanmuga sir has uh, more uh, has covered more into the part of digitalization like uh, adaptation of uh, technology for MSMEs. So thank you, thank once again thank you everyone for participating for the session. And we can, we now move on to the last portion, which is uh, B2B, which is basically Q and A part of the session. So I would like to request the participants to raise their questions if you uh, to speakers and here. So, so I would like to request participants to kindly unmute them, unmute them when they are about to raise their questions. Participants can kindly admit their mic to raise their questions, please.
They can also use the chat functionality to post their questions. Members, is there any question? Please, please uh, use your mics to raise the questions. You can unmute them, or you can also just mention it in the chat. I can convey the question here. Hello, this is Chandra Kumar. Could you hear me? Yes, sir. We can hear you, sir. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, this is uh, Chandra Kumar from uh, Sibbi PRS of New Delhi. Uh, this is a question uh, uh, regard to, uh, towards uh, uh, organizations of TIAC and uh, MTIB. Uh, so currently, Sibbi is offering a product whereby to meet the collateral requirements of the equipment finance. We are offering a product whereby 75% of the collateral can be given to the MSMEs. So in, in this regard, we wish to know like uh, whether yeah, TAIC and MTIB would be interested in um, such a scheme, sir. Sir, can you uh, repeat our answer again, sir? Yeah. So, ma'am, we are running a facility whereby for the equipment finance, we are offering 75% of the collateral. Okay. So, yeah. For to enable the people to avail the loan facilities for an energy efficient products. So, there are some uh, uh, guidelines for the scheme. So, if TAC is interested, we will be able to pursue the uh, modalities and scheme details with you. So, we want to know whether uh, both your organizations, MTIB and TAC, is interested, ma'am. Uh, sir, uh, can I check with my head office and can revert back, sir? Sure, ma'am. Sure, ma'am. Uh, they, they have to take a decision, sir. From CB yeah. side, you are saying, sir? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. This is I'm uh, based in Delhi. This is uh, this scheme has been rolled out across the country. There are some uh, scheme details are there. For example, the minimum loan amount should be fifteen lakhs and ma maximum can be fifteen crore. The collateral can be maximum up to seven three percentage. Uh, to towards which uh, margin amount should be collected from the benefit beneficiary. Okay. So this will probably help you in meeting the collateral requirement. Yes, sir. So many people will feel that uh, yeah, many people will feel collateral will be a, a stumbling point to avail the loan, uh, specifically MSME category. So to bridge that thing, uh, we are uh, trying to you know approach people uh, like uh, to benefit for the MSMEs. Okay. Okay, sir. Um, so probably I'll share your contact to Mr. Chandrakumar, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sure. So I'll share Mr. Yeah. Chandrakumar, sir's contact to you, so you can also talk to him. Okay. Okay, sir. Sure. Uh, from MTIB, any response on MTIB? Uh, so from MTIB, I think Mr. Vishu no, Mahajan. No, I no, I'm, I'm, no, I'm there. Uh, again, I yes, can we discuss this uh, outside the? Sure. So we'll sure, sir. Sure, sir. Yeah. Thank, thank you, sir. Thank you. Members, any other question, please?
so thank you all for participating so i hope uh, this session was very much helpful for all the participants who attended this session so we here in this session and we hopefully we look forward to meet you in the upcoming series of this event thank you all thank you speakers thank you participants thank you everyone thank you thank have you. a good day thank you thank you thank you thank you for the opportunity Thank you.